Stay right there in your cuisine chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. I can't believe how honored I am to be able to have this special guest back on Talk of the Desert as a follow-up interview because he's a busy man when he's here in the desert. And it's the one and only Glenn Gamble. Glenn, welcome back to Talk of the Desert. I am. I'm so excited. You can't believe it. Well, thank you, Melinda. Happy I, to be here. Well, I know that you were here for Birth Choice of the Desert's fundraiser for Americans mm -hmm. for Life dinner and here for the Bob Hope Chrysler Classic, which yep. you played in the, sh the today. And you're here to be honored also for, uh, with the Indian Wells Country Club. Mm -hmm. And a, there's a jazz session. And you're a busy man. Jazz session, John. It's fun. That yeah. is a lot of fun. Yeah, it sure is. I've been going to that in my ward for... Ever since, almost since Arnold Palmer and Jack Nichols were dancing together in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I've been, I've been coming down here for 30 years. That is absolutely amazing. I know it. And, but you'll do anything for a game of golf, as I understand. Well, not anything. <laughs> <laughs> just about. <laughs> I love it. I just love golf. That's terrific. Well, you live in Phoenix, but mm -hmm. you've been in the desert, in the Palm Springs desert, a whole lot recently in the past few months. Oh, yeah. We've uh, mm -hmm. Playing with the symphony was just... A total joy. You were here with, for the Indian Wells Desert mm -hmm. Symphony on November 16th. That, since I'm spokesperson for the symphony, I got oh, to great. MC for that yeah. event. And you were, it was just an absolutely wonderful, delightful, fun, enjoyable evening. You could go on with adjectives, but. Yeah, it was, well, the, the musicians, like some of them that I, that I work with in LA, they, they moved down here and they're in the, <laughs> in the symphony, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so was, I, I saw a lot of people that I knew in the symphony. That's terrific. Well, how often do you perform with the symphony? Um, I've been doing quite a bit of them. Uh, we're going to March in Hawaii. We're going to two days there in Honolulu. Uh, and then get to stay a week. Yeah, so, yeah. And that's why I'm taking the kids and the wife to sure. that one. Because I have teenagers now. They're 18, 17, and 15. Yeah, two boys and then my little Ashley's fit turned 15. Oh. The baby, huh? The baby. <laughs> She's a baby. She's about three inches taller than her mother already. <laughs> that happened to me and my mother, too. <laughs> Did it? Yeah, exactly. But I know that you also performed with the South Dakota Orchestra. Yeah. And that's coming out on DVD and video cassette. Yes, it is. Yes. And I'm very glad about that. And Country Music Television bought, uh, I think, 13 Good Time Hours. Uh, to show and then show the life. I don't know how many times it starts. It, it starts airing in February, I think. Uh, they've got it as February. starting as February second at seven p.m. Oh, good. Oh, good. It's off that, your this, internet that site. That's this time. That's this time. February second at seven p.m. The release good. says January seventh, two thousand two. So I imagine yeah. that this is up to date information. Good. Yeah, but the um, when you performed with the South Dakota Orchestra, you that was aired on PBS. Yes. It was, again, it was a fabulous show. Thank you. And they, they keep airing it and airing it, so that's they cool. They do. Yeah. They do. I really, well, re that, that really did come off well. And I'll have to give credit to uh, uh, Take Five, uh, Dale Jansen and the production company out of They were out in Nashville, actually, but, and it uh, really worked out well. It was a fabulous show, but then a lot of us got to see you perform in person with the Indian Wells Desert Symphony. Yeah. And that particular show is airing currently on Time Warner TV 10. At one o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, so. great! <laughs> so With my daughter Debbie. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But Glenn, I have to ask you a few questions about your performance with the symphony. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, you play the guitar on top of your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you have too much time on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I did when I was a kid. Boy, when I was a kid, I had all the time in the world. And we lived out in the country. We didn't have electricity. We had to watch TV by candlelight. Oh, <laughs> I know. We didn't have electricity. I remember when electricity came through, uh -huh. and uh, there wasn't a lot to do. It was farming, and as soon as you was big enough, you were you were picking cotton, or you were gathering corn, or you were planting. And I mainly that my fondest memories was the I was, when I was a little kid. Was I would be to work in the garden with Mama, 
really. Yeah, yeah. And she, she grew the biggest turnips and, and beets and stuff like that. It was just great. Good bonding time with Mama. Huh? Yeah, it really yeah. was. She yeah, was well, I miss her. God you, love her. Oh, it's really tough to lose them. No question yeah, about it is. that. But you, you like have, t there's 11 siblings. You're the 12th? There's 12, there's there's 12 kids, yeah. 12 kids, yeah. That's Eight boys and four girls. <laughs> Dad said, they come cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, there wasn't a baker's dozen, huh? Right. <laughs> he had his own workforce, I can tell you that. Yeah. What George Goober said the line, he said, what, what, he said, we live so far in the country, we had to hunt toward town. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were born in Delight, Arkansas, yeah. and Glenn, you are uh, a delight in person, and oh, you're also you. a delight on the stage. No well, question about you. that. It must have something to do with the hometown, huh? <laughs> yeah, it does. Delight. That's a good one. Dad was a, and Mom, I would have them on stage with me. When, when I'd play Vegas, and I had the whole, in fact, I had the whole family out for a reunion when I was in Vegas one time. Fantastic. It was, it was a scream. So right. You must have a stage full of people if you had a family reunion on stage. Oh, I, I did. I got a photo of it. It's, you know, nieces and nephews, my, my, my brothers and sisters and their kids, mm -hmm. and their kids' kids mm -hmm. in, in certain senses. Um, uh, I was trying to. Oh, Dad! I got to tell you a story. He would. I'd bring Mom and Dad on stage and sing with me. We'd do "Silver Haired Daddy of Mine," oh. and then Mom and Dad would do "Crying Time." Oh, it's crying time again. You're gonna leave me. It was. People just loved him. And Dad was a ham. He really was. <laughs> Not like his son, huh? <laughs> right. When I went on the stage uh, to do the show, Dad was into the peanuts. You know, and I don't know how he did it, but he did it without his, his, his teeth hurt him. It wasn't, it wasn't peanuts, it was like popcorn or something like that. And he had taken his teeth out. And, uh, and he was 80, Dad was 80, 79 years old. And he came out, when I called him out to do crying time with me, because I did it about 30 minutes into the show. Well, he, he said, uh, I said, well, and they, they just killed the audience because his Dad's, he said, I said, you ready to start now? And he says, Oh my God! He said, "I forgot my teeth," <laughs> and he had taken them out of his. He had taken them out when he was eating the popcorn and rolled them in napkins, mm -hmm. put them in napkins. And, well, he stood there and picked all the paper <laughs> off of that Kleenex in front of the audience on stage in Las Vegas. On stage, and then he put his teeth in and went click click. And he said, "I'm ready now, son." And I, everybody, the horn players couldn't even play. You know, we had to wait till everybody quit laughing. <laughs> and during the sh and Paul Lynn was uh, sitting right down in front, you know. And Paul, you know, they said, there's Paul Lynn down there, Glenn. I said, yeah, I know, Dad. I was going to introduce him, and, but you've already done it, so I'll introduce him now, <laughs> you know. And after the show, I mean, right when Mom and Dad left, I, when I introduced Paul, I said, of all the people I think that should have a show in Las Vegas is Paul Lynn. And Paul says, I can't. He said, my parents are dead. <laughs> I couldn't believe that whole scenario. He couldn't do a show because his parents weren't around. Oh, well, that's actually a great compliment, Glenn. I think, oh. yeah. That what a wonderful story. But you were like four years old when you took up the guitar, weren't mm -hmm. you? I don't remember not not playing no. G chord and mm -hmm. C chord. Mm -hmm. Daddy bought me a capo so I could play in any key up and down the neck. You know, you put it in C, play C sharp, and it's all the same position. Okay. But you now play a variety of different guitars, because there's yeah. all sorts of different... How many different types of guitars do you play? Well, I just play 6-string, 12-string, and, and, and acoustic. Acoustic 6, electric 6. And uh, sometimes I'll pick up Kenny's mandolin and play Spanish two-step or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but um, I still can't figure out how you decided to do this on top of your head. <laughs> like I said, when you've got a lot of time on your hands, you're, you, you do it. When I learned to play it, I said, it's, that's the, it's the, it, flows so easy mm -hmm. to play, you know. So it's just easy to go over your head <laughs> as it is to do it here. Okay. I think I, my shoulder, I got to go be operated on from doing that, I think. <laughs> no. so I went and got it scanned and I said, they said I'm moving have to take some stuff out of that shoulder. And I said, that's probably from throwing my guitar over my head. I thought it was only like tennis elbow. This is like guitar shoulder. Guitar shoulder. It must be. <laughs> okay. Whatever. But you also play the bagpipes. Yeah. When you play, when you sing and play Amazing Grace. How did that come out on the air? I didn't, I didn't well, it. would you like to see it? I would love you to. You would love to see it. Well, yeah. we have it all queued up from the Indian Wells Desert Symphony Performance on November 16th. You're with kidding. None other than Glenn Campbell. That sounds Campbell. like a setup to me. That sounds like a but setup. But it's not a setup. Amazing grace. 
Fantastic, Glenn. Okay, so how long did it take you to learn to play the bagpipes? It's a, I don't know, probably a month. Oh, really? Just to learn the fingering, you know. Okay. The hard part is keeping air in the bag. I used to do that, I don't know why, but I could play it with my mouth. Mm -hmm. I could play, you know, like, I can play Bonaparte Retreat, like, Did you hear the, the high note? Yes, yes. Yeah, that tickled my nose. People, <laughs> when I did that, people say, boy, is there no beginning to this man's talent? <laughs> you, there wasn't a lot to do on the farm, you know, you got to understand that, and without electricity. Yeah, exactly, but you were watching TV by candlelight, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you made a comment while we were watching the piece with, uh, of Amazing Grace, um, that, that it's hard, that the, or that the bagpipe is never in tune? What do you mean it's by that? It's rarely in tune. It's, okay. it's, it's at the whelm of how cool it is or how hot it is. Oh, really? Yeah, if it's cooler, it's better. Because if it's hot, the reed is sharp. In fact, I'll never forget, it. in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, we was playing one of those outside gigs, and my bagpipe had set out there in the sun, and when I picked it up, it was an E instead of E flat. <laughs> So I said, hey, we're closer to E than we are E flat, so let's just play it in E flat. I mean, in E. And I did, and it was this, the worst. Oh. I, just, I just finally stopped it and sang it all. Well, that's very, uh, I think, a little trivia information that most people don't know about oh, the bagpipes. It, it is. It, but I have a little more trivia information that oh, I was told, yes, that the plaid of the um, bagpipe. That bagpipe that you play is the uh, Campbell Tartan plaid. Right, it's is a Campbell right? work plaid. Okay, I think that's fascinating. The dress plaid is like a green and white. It's got more white in it. Okay, so obviously you did research on your family and to find out what the tartan plaid oh, was. Yeah, oh definitely. yeah, definitely. I went back to the. In fact, I was blessed enough to do, be doing a show with Jack Nicholas. Ben Crenshaw and I played Jack Nicholas on Peter Alice's TV show, and uh, we were blessed enough to get to borrow the BBC helicopter. 
we did it at St. Andrews. And I, I got to fly over all the old, uh, the Campbell of Argyle, uh, where some of the old castles were, mm -hmm. and it, it was such remote country. Country. I mean, mm -hmm. that is really rugged mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I'm very blessed to have got to see that and got to see where Absolutely. my ancestors grew up, you know. Well, we're going to take a break here on Talk of the Desert. When we come back, we're going to be back with the rhinestone cowboy, Glenn Campbell. Thank you. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. We are back with this wonderful, excellent, dynamic performer, Glenn Campbell. Glenn, we're going to talk about Jimmy Webb, who wrote a lot of your hit songs. Yes. Uh, he wrote Wichita Lineman for me. That was after I'd done Phoenix, by the time I get to Phoenix. And when he heard it and heard how I'd changed it, not changed it, not any big changes, not merit to merit, no chord changes or anything, just a few notes here and there. And uh, he wrote Wichita Lineman for me after that. And Jimmy got the award for, on Wichita Lineman for being the most played song, the most aired song on radio of the millennium. I says, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> why did you just say, since when was radio invented? Yeah, 1922, you know? something yeah, like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, the millennium has only been about 60 or 70 years. I know. <laughs> but he got the award for that, the most played song ever, ever played on radio. Fantastic. That's, that's probably because it was, it was like, it stayed number two on the pop charts. It never did get to number one on the pop charts. It stayed number two, number two, number two. But it was number one easy listening and number one country for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think being on the, being that bigger record on the three, uh, what do they call them? What do you call the, that? The, the charts. Um, isn't that what you're talking The yeah. billboard and... No, um, the three stations, oh, the country oh, stations, oh, the, the country pop, pop station, and, and the rock stations. And the rock station, stations. Yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Roger, Roger Miller said, they'll call them croc. <laughs> <laughs> Put them all together, country and rock, you know. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, you worked with some other wonderful arrangers and, uh, right, and um, lyric oh, yeah. writers. And who are some of your other favorites? Uh, I think I could, the biggest blessing that I had, I was driving down Sunset Boulevard, I think. Uh, and I was going to Capitol Records, and I heard... Rhinestone Cowboy on an album cut station because I listened to album cut stations and it was done by Larry Weiss and it, what, there wasn't a single on it and I found out there wasn't a single on it. Boy, I, I hit that studio and read it. And the funny thing was Al Corey, who was a, a head of capital at the time, A&R and, uh, and the music and president of the company, he said, I'll play you a song. I said, no, I'll play you one. And, uh, he played me Rhinestone Cowboy. <laughs> so I put my tape on, and I played him Rhinestone Cowboy. And he looked at me and says, that's never happened. I said, well, it sure did. And he made that thing, well, it was the record of the year in 1975. Well, and, it, and we're still great friends. And I gotta, I'm going to go and see him play golf with him in L.A. when I'm in there next time. Terrific. Well, and that has become your theme song. Yeah, it? definitely. Yes. Yeah, that's, that is such an incredible piece of music. Mm -hmm. And now, do you have any guesstimation of how many times you performed Rhinestone Cowboy? Gosh, I don't know. Probably mm -hmm. 25, 30. Twenty-five or thirty times, huh? Right. It, it's a, maybe twenty-five thousand yeah, times. Yeah, a bunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My most memorable experience they 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 made me a white like a white they had white white jeans and a white shirt and a white hat and they put rhinestones all over it for me to do it on the American Music Awards on a horse, <laughs> and then John Wayne came out, deer in the middle, and when we was rehearsing it, Duke, I I said. I thought the horse was going to jump off of the, they had a horse on the platform. And Duke said, just let her, just let the horse have its rein, and don't, and instead of trying to guide it, and she'll, she'll stay. 
And you know, he was right. Really? He really? wasn't only a cowboy, he knew a lot about horses. Yeah. No. But, but that's the most memorable thing I believe I've ever done was to be <laughs> introduced by John Wayne and stand on and sit on a horse and sing Rhinestone Cowboy on national television. No, but did the horse have rhinestones on it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, on yeah. The saddle. Everything. Everything was rhinestones. <laughs> How fabulous. But to be introduced by John Rain Wayne, that's got to yeah. be something. He was. He was identical to the way he was on screen really? in person. Well, let's talk about that. You did a movie, True Grit, with John Wayne. Oh, yeah. I see that. I've seen that thing. It was. It's on every <laughs> week, it seems like, on one of, the, one of the TNT. AMC or something. Yeah, yeah or exactly. American, you know, yeah. Classic, classic movies yeah, and all that. Yeah. And I still see me do the same thing. At least I'm consistent. <laughs> 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 I was new about this. I've never acted before in films. And he said, just follow me. And just if I say something, only nobody gave me the inside except when Robert Duvall did. He says, try to talk in the same level of voice. So, and like most movie stars, they talk, oh, yeah, I've been down there before. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You know. And then they talk like that. And they talk so little. Well, I was in such a habit of saying, you know, standing up between 300 people saying, Hi, I'm Glenn Campbell, welcome to the show. And, blah, blah. and that's the way it sounded to me in True Grit. Or if I'd had that to do over and says, Yeah, I did that, so what of it? <laughs> I, would have, I would have had, I would have talked lower. Like, do you ever notice whoever, George Clooney or Brad Pitt, they were saying, Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> but they, it's hardly audible. But they, mm -hmm. they, of course, they got a lot better equipment now. Mm, well, that's true. But John won his only Oscar. His with only Oscar. Grit. I gave him yeah. that push he needed. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Win his only Oscar. <laughs> and you talk about being blessed. Uh, to, for me to get to sing an Oscar-nominated song on the Oscars, you know, there ain't many boys out of the country from Delight, Arkansas, or anywhere else <laughs> in the country that said they did that. That's for sure. Uh, but that was, that was sure a lot of fun. Yeah. I wish it had won the Oscar. Yeah. It didn't. But it had, it, the competition was so strong. Strong. Uh, uh, raindrops keep falling on my head with such a, oh. a huge hit. Absolutely. Well, I also want to tell our audience, when you performed with the Indian Wells Desert Symphony on November 16th, during the Willem Tell Overture, when you were playing up yeah. here, um, you have a video running mm -hmm. that is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> tell us about how that video came up for those, you know, 2,000 people that were in the auditorium. Well, the first movie I ever saw when I was a kid was The Lone Ranger in Tonto. Yes. Is it black well, and white? Well, of course. The, the, the theater in D-Light, Arkansas. And uh, I just, it was always something I wanted to do. But when I got the, when I got the, al the album that William Tell was on, you know, uh, the bridge was just so fast, you know. It was that fast. I slowed it down to half time, and it actually is a great melody. Oh, very much so. Because I couldn't, I couldn't even play it that fast. Mm -hmm. I don't see how the string players. I, I, I look around. <laughs> every, every, every orchestra I play and say, "Boy, I'm glad you slowed that <laughs> middle part." <down." laughs> it's just almost impossible to play that way. I and mean, you'd have to be the best fiddle player in the world to do that, or Absolutely. violinist. Excuse me. Out there. Uh, no, no, fiddle player from Arkansas, right. right? Yeah. Well, now tell us how you did this video with you being the Lone Ranger oh, and Tonto. It it's so a, much fun. It's hilarious. I was out, we were doing a, a video for Rhinestone Cowboy, which has never aired that I know of. It, well, it's aired, but I didn't, they haven't aired it on country music TV or, mm -hmm. or nothing like that. Uh, and I was making a video for that, and I had the idea while I was doing that to do uh, this video as the Lone Ranger and put it in the background while I play it. And the, the same guy that did the, with my stunt man in uh, True Grit did the falls and because I wouldn't, I wouldn't fall off of a horse. <laughs> I meant on purpose because I'd afraid I'd break my guitar finger. You know, yeah, exactly. Guitar arm, be out of business for a while. And he did a great job. Oh. And the place where it looks like an outhouse was actually a, a, a little place where he kept his shovels and uh, post hole diggers and stuff like that. It was Cliffy Stone's ranch out in the, toward the, uh, Lancaster in Los Angeles, out of Los Angeles. Well, it, it was just one of those harebrained ideas. I was, wanted to do it, and when the hair's rare, horse rares up, fall off, you know, just do, make it silly. It was just darling, absolutely people darling. people enjoy that. Yeah. Well, we have about three minutes left, Glenn. This half hour has gone by really fast. Yeah, it has. What I want to talk about, you are here in the desert again for oh, to play in the Bob Hope right. Classic, which you said you've been doing this for 
30 uh, years? Yeah, I played in at least 30 well, years ago. My information says that this is your 28th year. It may yeah. not be totally consecutive, but Yeah, I missed a couple years. of years. Yes. I, I, I got booked, and I said, no, you ain't going to book me no more during the whole. Hey, it was, but it was money, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It was money. Uh, for them. Yeah. You know, for, I said, well. You know, I said, how much money do you want? <laughs> I said, I'm playing. I said, no, don't, just don't book me anymore. I said, if you book me anymore while the hope is on, I said, I'll quit you. Well, <laughs> you are receiving, and by the time this show airs, you ha will have received an award for being inducted into the Bob Hope Classic Hall of Fla oh, Fame yeah. from the Indian Wells Country Club. And you, you're in some pretty uh, good uh, steed yes. there with uh, uh, Bob Hope and President Ford oh, and yeah. a lot of other people that have received this award. Yeah, I, I, that's two men that I dearly love. Yes. Uh, I used to go and play in Gerald Ford's tournament in uh, Aspen, Colorado. Uh, not Aspen, but the other one. I can't think of the name of it. Vale. Vale. Yes. 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 Vale. I probably couldn't. I probably couldn't see it in my mind because I had a veil over it. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's, 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 I, those are really two great men of yeah, our time. Absolutely. Well, and this is being pre presented by the Board of Governors from the Indian Wells Country Club. So yes. congratulations. Thank you very much. And you were here and performed with, for the Birth Choice of the Desert, the Crisis Pregnancy mm -hmm. Center for Americans for Life Dinner, which I mentioned earlier. And I'm so honored because I was the MC for the event and yeah, I got yeah. to introduce Glenn Campbell. I mean, like I'm thinking this little 12 year old girl, little girl with buck teeth and freckled faces getting to introduce Glenn <laughs> Campbell. I mean, this was never in my uh, uh, wildest dreams when I get to do that. So I was very honored to do that and the show was fantastic Thank everybody you. loved the show it was fun doing but I, I, was, I wasn't you know like some places sometimes when you do something it's like you're not there <laughs> all all together you know well, you're not thinking of songs you're not thinking of anything and well, but you, I enjoyed it well you fun. have a busy week this week oh, and oh, yeah. I know how much you love golf mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah anyway we have a minute left Glenn what's in the future for Glenn Campbell I think I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. I hope so. Uh, going out and doing gigs. I love to play. We're playing with the Hawaii Symphony. We're playing with yes. this and that. And I may go to Australia again. I've been down there like seven or eight times. In fact, and the reason for that is I did a special with Olivia Newton-John that was called Down Home, Down Under. Uh, and it, it aired in Australia and, all, and Great Britain. It aired all over the world, actually. And uh, I really like it down there. New Zealand. Yeah, beautiful country. That's this beautiful, beautiful country. Rugged country, boy. They got thanks and look at you in Australia and you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> they got some poison and stuff down there. Well, stay away from those, would you please? I will. I'll but you are will. an American treasure and we want to keep you here. <laughs> <laughs> Safe and sound. Glenn, thank you so much for your time and for spending it's your time here in the desert and um, I mean, guess what I get when I get back? What? A World Series ring. Yeah. My Arizona Diamondbacks of the World Series. Yay. And I invested in them when they first well, started. I'd like to thank Glenn Campbell for joining me in Talk of the Desert. Thank you so much. And thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.